Okay, so Brian here again with ECC, and today we're, I'm going to show you how to test a throttle position sensor with a lab scope. I'm also going to hook up to a map sensor so we can compare how the throttle position sensor and map sensor work together and how we can use them to verify the operation of each other on an engine that's running. So I'm going to do some testing on the TPS sensor with the engine off, and then we'll start up and we'll look at how both of these react with the engine running. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take my leads and I need to back probe my TPS sensor. So one lead on my scope is going to go to ground and the other one is going to go to the signal wire of my throttle position sensor. And then I'm going to use another lead to go to my a signal return for my map sensor and that's to be my channel 2. So each of these sensors has three wires going to it and that's going to be a power a ground and a signal return. So I need to figure out which is the signal return. Now there's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can go into the office and look up on all data or Mitchell and look at the wiring schematic and figure it out. But since these are three wire sensors, we know that they have to have VREF for voltage reference. We know they have to have ground and we know they have to have signal return because that's how all of our three wire sensors work. We also know that with three wire sensors, normally the ground and the voltage reference are shared by all the three wire sensors. When we looked at schematics and we looked at our circuit numbering, we found that if a circuit has the same number, it'll have the same color wire throughout the circuit. So applying those rules, I can look at these two sensors and probably figure out what my signal return wires are. So if I look at my throttle position sensor right here on the side of the throttle body, I have a purple and white, an orange and black, and a black and green, or green and black, depending on how you look at it. Looks like black and green. If I come over to my map sensor, I have a black and green, a green, and a purple and white. So since two of the sensors have a purple and white, and they have a black and green, that means that they have to be my ground and my signal and my VREF. That leaves the other wire that's different and the green wire in the case of the map or the orange and black wire in the case of my TPS has to be my signal return. So with a little bit of deductive reasoning, even if all I wanted to do is test the TPS, I can compare the wiring on it to another sensor and figure out what my signal return is much quicker than I can go look it up. Also, I only have three wires here, so I can probably test all three wires quicker than I can go look it up just by comparing the voltage. One's going to have five volts that never changes. One's going to have zero volts that never changes. And one of the wires should have a voltage that changes from half a volt up to four and a half volts. So I'm going to hook up my ground for my scope onto a good ground. And I'm just going to go right on here onto my engine. And I'm going to back probe my orange wire here. And we just slide that right up the wire and try to hit the metal at the end of it. Yeah, got that. That one was pretty deep. And I'm going to do the same thing with the green. Now on the green, because it's a little harder to get to, I can actually take it off, back probe it, and then connect it back up. And now I can turn my key on and I can set my scope up once I turn the key on. So actually, we're going to go set up the scope. And then we'll turn the key on, look at our signals, and we'll do our key on engine off testing of the TPS. Then we'll start it up and see how the map sensor responds with the TPS as we rev the engine up and come back down to idle. Okay, so I've got my scope set up here. My throttle position sensor and map sensor both work on a five volt voltage reference. And therefore I need five volts of range for each sensor. So what I've done is I've used a 10 volt scale so if I pull up my scale here by clicking the data button, and I'm going to click it twice. So I've just clicked the data button twice, and what I've done is I've set each of these up for 10 volts, and I've given myself a five-second time frame. If I want to change that, all I have to do is click on that, and I can click anytime I want. So if I want to look at 10 seconds on the screen, I just highlight the 10 and go back, and now I have 10 seconds going across the screen. If I want less time, I would do the same thing. I'm going to go back to my five seconds. And I would do the same thing with the voltage. So if I wanted my voltage, I could go to five volts on each, which is a common mistake people make. 
And now in order for everything to see, I would need to take both of these down. So now if I look over here, these are both around the same point on zero volts. Well, the problem is with a five volt scale, they're gonna be on top of each other. So it's gonna be really hard for me to see what drops out or what's missing. So that's why since I'm gonna look at two patterns, I'm gonna double my scale to 10 volts. I'm gonna keep zero volts for my yellow, which is my throttle position sensor here, channel one, but I'm gonna move channel two, so zero volts is where five volts would be on channel one. And in order to do that, I need to go back to that 10 volt scale. So now that I'm on the 10 volt scale, I'm gonna drag channel two, so that zero volts for channel two is right up about where the five volts is for channel one. And there we go, and that's close enough, I'm real close. Now I've got a full five volts for my TPS, and I've got a full five volts for my map sensor, and I can see how they compare to each other without running over the top of each other. And that's critical. This is what, what I want for sensor comparison. The mistake a lot of people make is they do what I showed you the first time. They put all their zeros at the same place. They're using different channels, and the channels are yelling on top of each other. And if, if we put a bunch of people in together and they're all talking at the same time, we really can't understand what anyone's saying. The same thing is true for my scope pattern. If I put everyone at the same zero mark, it's real hard to hear the story that each of my channels is trying to tell me. So now I'm gonna turn the car on with key on engine off and I'm gonna take a look. My map center voltage on channel one should jump up to around half a volt. Once I do that, let me know I have a good connection. If I don't have that, then I need to play with my back probe till I get a good connection. There we go. Okay. So we can see what happened right here. Two things. Let me back up the screen a little bit. So what I've done is I've just zoomed out and I want to come over here where I see this change. Right here is where we turn the key on. We see my, my channel one, which is my throttle position sensor, went up to right around half a volt like I expected. What happened is my map sensor went up to almost five volts, a little off my scale. So I wanna move my zero volt reading so I can see the whole thing. The reason why it did that is my map sensor at key on engine off acts like a barometric pressure sensor. So it's taking a reading of whether I'm at sea level or whether I'm at Denver, Colorado, or whether I'm up on Pikes Peak. We need to know our altitude. This is when the computer makes that calculation off the map sensor's key on engine off. So. With looking at this, I can zoom back in a little bit here. There we go. And you can see where I zoomed in. This is where I stopped the recording. And we can see where I went up here. So this is where I did my change. There we go. And now I can see here's where we turn the key on. So I got my half fold here and I went up off the scale. So what this tells me if I want to measure this is I need to move my zero line down a little bit. So I'm going to go back to live and move my zero line down a little bit. Now I'm back to live. There we go. So I moved my zero line down closer to the four volts, which still shouldn't be a problem. Um, and now I can see I'm not at five volts. Because Remember, we have our 90-10 rule for sensors. Uh, I will get up to about 4.8 volts on this. Now, if I want to see exactly how many volts I have, I would need to use my cursors. So how my cursors work is I'm gonna stop the screen. <clears throat> I'm gonna to go to cursors right here. And I'm gonna tell it to show me the cursors. And now my cursors are shown on the screen. So I have cursor number one, cursor number two, and they're gonna give me a voltage and time exactly where they intersect each of these lines. In order to view that, I need to click the data button once. So now that I've clicked the data button once, cursor one hits channel one at 710 millivolts. It hits channel two at 471 millivolts. Cursor two hits channel one at 670 millivolts. And 
hits channel two at 4.66 millivolts. So we can see a little bit of movement in the line that's normal. If I'm looking at this number on a scan tool, it's gonna give me that average here because I'm looking at the electrical signal from the sensor. I'm gonna get a little bit of movement up and down, which is not uncommon. So I can see where I'm at, where my cursors read. I also have a recording, the minimum voltage it saw and the maximum voltage it saw during this movie that I just took and froze. Delta means the difference in voltage between the two points. So the difference in voltage between point between 710 millivolts and 670 millivolts, it's saying 30 millivolts. Now we know the difference between 6771 is four, but again, keep in mind we're rounding. So this is gonna round to, to the clearest whole number. And same with my delta here, 471 to 466, we're at five, so that's reserved. This lower part in the white is my time. So if I was doing a time measurement, for example, measuring how long an injector is open or measuring how long I saturate a coil, the time is the time on the movie where each of these cursors are. So 2.96 seconds and 3.61 seconds. And the difference of those two times, my delta time is 650 milliseconds or 0.65 seconds. So that is how I would use the cursors to get the voltage reading here. I would have to freeze the screen and do that. So although I happen to be using a Veris Pro here, the MODISes uh, work the exact same way that we have it on, on the campus that we we'll use in the lab. So these controls are the same throughout almost all the Snap-on products going back for the last 10 to 15 years. So very, very consistent menu strategy on the Snap-on products. So what I showed you here today is gonna be really helpful for using any of those products. So now let's get into actually testing the TPS sensor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my live reading. I'm gonna get rid of my cursors. Although if we notice as I'm live, my cursors aren't giving me any information here other than telling me where they're placed. So they're not giving me any voltage information. To get that voltage information, I would need to stop recording. Then it'll give me the voltage information. So I'm gonna get rid of my cursor so I can't see them. I'm gonna hide them. So now I'm looking at my throttle position sensor. So what I want to do is I want to slowly open my throttle and slowly close my throttle. I should go up to somewhere around four volts. I need to go over 3.8 volts. Some systems go to four, some systems go to four and a half. And then I want it to come down. I want it to go up nice and steady without any glitches. I want to move the throttle fairly slowly. That's why I'm on a five second scale. If I'm moving it slower than this, I can always change to a 10 second scale to get more view, but this should be sufficient. So I'm going to go over and rock the throttle and let's watch what happens to our voltage here. Okay, so as you can see, I did several rise and falls. So now I'm gonna freeze it. I'm gonna zoom out using my zoom button. And what we're looking at here is I did this a little bit. I actually touched the green wire, which caused a bad connection on my back probe, so I fixed that. And then when I went over and went back to snapping the throttle. So you can see each time I snap the throttle. In order to get more detail, what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in. So I'm going to move this white line right here to the center of where I want to zoom. And now I'm going to zoom in. And I can see I have several openings and closings with no dropouts. If I had a bad throttle position sensor, normally they wear out right in this area and you'll see it rising and dropping because we spend most of our time on our throttle just slightly off idle. I did this key on engine off because in order for me to snap the throttle, taking several seconds, because this is two seconds, four seconds, six seconds, you can see between here, I took four seconds to do this. And this is with a wide open throttle. If I did that on the car, sitting in the engine bay, my engine would over rev, I damaged the engine. So I can't do this test with the engine running, I need to do it with the key on engine off. That's why we did this way. Now, if I wanna know exactly how many volts I got, because I'm definitely pretty close to that four volts, it's looking like it might be a little low. I get the cursors back out, tell it to show the cursors. I can get rid of this. And then I can move the cursor right here. And it tells me 3.77 volts. So I'm a, 
really not quite hitting that 3.8. It's a rule of thumb that I'd like. So at this point, what I need to do is go look this up in the manufacturer information to see if this is a problem. Now, this vehicle operates okay. I don't have any codes, but that doesn't mean that this can't be a problem. This might uh, inhibit my ability to actually get wide open throttle to get all my fuel delivery. Now, I do see that during the time I took the movie, my voltage did get up to 3.96, means I'm not hitting the same amount of voltage every time. So if I move the cursor now to another peak, 3.78, 3.74, I am not getting over that 3.8 volt. So that's a little bit of a concern to me. Also, my low voltage is 0.73. As a rule of thumb, we figure between a half a volt and a volt is pretty normal. Uh, but again, manufacturers have specifications. So if I'm not sitting where I think I should be, I want to go in and let's check that against manufacturer specifications. If the manufacturer says it only needs to go over 3.6 volts, I'm good. If the manufacturer says it has to go over 3.8 or has to go over 4 volts, then what I need to do is I need to verify a good power and a good ground going to the sensor and verify that my throttle is able to move its full range and that someone didn't adjust something keeping it from doing that. If both of those things are working properly, then I'd need to replace the sensor. Uh, but like I said, this vehicle has no current drivability problem having to do with the TPS. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do it with the engine running and we're going to have to move the throttle much quicker. I'm going to have to snap the throttle, but we're going to watch what happens to our map sensor at the same time. So let me get rid of the cursors and let me go back to live and let's start the vehicle. And we're, as soon as we start the vehicle, we're going to watch this map voltage drop because we're no longer measuring atmospheric pressure, we're going to be measuring the pressure in the intake manifold, which is vacuum. Okay, so it just started. We saw our map voltage drop. Normally we figure somewhere around two volts on this engine. Uh, that varies by manufacturer. Honda can't be over a volt. So always check that about against specifications. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rev the engine up and bring it back down. And if you watch, both lines are going to move together. So now I'm going to take my capture. I'm going to zoom out. And I can see where we had all this for a while. And we started the engine. And then right here is where I snap the engine each time. So I'm going to move this line over to zoom in on that area. Okay, so let's look at what's happening here. I'm idling. I snap the throttle. As I snap the throttle, I get rid of vacuum. Therefore, pressure increases. And then when I close the throttle, just like what we did with our hand vacuum gauge, when I close the throttle, the pistons are going around quickly, the engine's going around quickly, and I slam that throttle. We get more vacuum than I get at idle. So this is my increase in vacuum right here. This is showing that I had more vacuum than idle vacuum when I slam the throttle closed. Then it slowly builds back up to the same, or draw, vacuum goes back to my idle vacuum, and I did the snap again. If you notice, my TPS has a nice snap, and I quickly closed the throttle, unlike with the key on engine off, where I was slowly moving it both ways. I had to move it much quicker this time. So as this goes up, this also goes up. So my manifold absolute pressure is directly related to throttle. So if I zoom in a little bit more here, you can see where they have a similar profile here. My map sensor drops quickly, because uh, uh, I mean, rises more quickly than this because pressure is changing quicker than I can move the throttle. But you can still see that they mimic each other. So if I move the throttle, but this barely didn't move or this moved up very slowly, that would be an indication that I might have a restricted exhaust or something like that because I'm opening the throttle, but I have no place to put the air. Well, if I have no place to put the air, either I have an engine that's extremely out of time, like retarded because it can't breathe, or I have a plugged exhaust. So this is a great test for checking one sensor against another. How's my engine breathing? So this is a very non-intrusive test. And yet it told me a lot. It told me not only does my throttle position sensor work and my map sensor works, but my engine is actually breathing efficiently and that I'm able to open the throttle 
I'm able to dump all my vacuum, it's able to displace, and then when I close the throttle, I'm able to develop even more vacuum than I did at idle. So this tells me that my engine is working efficiently. This is the same type of test we did with the vacuum gauge earlier in the class, but now I'm using a MAP sensor. So by understanding what this voltage means, comparison to pressure helps me use this tool instead of another tool. So this is the cool thing about this tool is I didn't need to go buy it. This tool, the MAP sensor, came what? With the vehicle if it has a MAP sensor. So it's just a matter of learning how to interpret the data. Uh, I can try doing this with a scan tool. The problem is in graph that data, it'll get me close, but keep in mind my scan tool is only gonna refresh, depending on the car, every 50 milliseconds to every several hundred milliseconds. It may be too slow to actually see this amount of detail. That's why we use lab scopes. You can see between here and here, this is one second. So if my scan tool only updates every, five, every 200 milliseconds, that means it's gonna update five times and draw a line connecting them where this is updating constantly. I'm able to get a lot more detail. So hopefully this helped understanding not only how to use a lab scope, how to test the TPS sensor, but also how to test the MAP sensor and understand the correlation in operation between my MAP sensor, which measures absolute pressure, and my throttle angle. Thank you for watching today.